Hi and welcome to part 3 of Shipmaster's Oral Preparation videos. I hope you have watched part 1 and 2. If not, then the link to the videos are provided in the description section below. In these videos, I take up a few questions that are often asked in the oral examination for Shipmaster candidates and provide you with answers in depth as required for oral examination. So let's get started with today's first question. So a candidate was asked that in the event that you would have to beach your vessel as a master and in order to prevent a total constructive loss, what ideal conditions would you prefer? Beaching the vessel is an extreme action and it would not be carried out if an alternative action is available to save the vessel. It is an action which is employed to save the hull of the vessel with the view to instigating repairs and to refloat at a later time with improved conditions. The idle conditions for a beaching operation should include as many as the following. Preferably, it should be carried out as a daylight operation and not at night because as common sense dictates during daylight, you can easily um, or you can clearly see the conditions in which you are beaching the vessel. Secondly, you must have a gentle slope to the beach at the point of taking the ground. By gentle slope, I mean a sandy bottom or a soft mud bottom or a gentle slope that is not too steep where the vessel can easily just climb over the surface without damaging the hull or the forward part of the vessel. It should also be a rock free ground area and again because if there is a rocky bottom or it's a rocky bottom then the rocks can damage the bottom part of the vessel and then it will be difficult for the vessel to again refloat and resume its voyage. You must also have a current free or a non tidal situations especially because if uh, the area is uh, highly prone to change in tidal conditions or strong currents, it will be difficult for you to keep your vessel beached at the position that you want it to be beached. It will refloat again, even though you don't want it to. So you want your vessel to refloat. You want it to refloat at the right tidal conditions, but you don't want it to refloat without your approval or without or when you don't want it to refloat. So uh, an area where there are strong kinds, uh, strong currents or um, very uh, um, unpredictive uh, 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 tidal conditions or you know when you don't know how to predict the tidal conditions then the vessel might refloat and put your vessel back into danger. Finally that area should be surf free uh, not very prone to high surf areas or high waves or something like that for the same reason and you may be able to communication carry out communications into and out of the area where you have beached the vessel if possible so these are some of the idle conditions of course it's very difficult for you to tick all these boxes because like i told you unless it's an intentional beaching if you're carrying it out in an emergency uh, you will just have to do with what is available to you but this is a question asked in the oral examination so you can answer it this way a follow-up question to this question is often that uh, assuming that your vessel is in a damaged condition and you have just beached the vessel to prevent it from further getting it damaged, what would be your immediate actions? Now as a master, of course, your subsequent actions on taking the ground will largely depend on what you were able to do um, on running into the shoreline. Now, of course, assuming that the prevailing conditions did not lend to any positive actions, you would order the chief officer to probably walk back both the anchors to prevent the accidentally refloating of the ground into a deep water predicament. So like I told you before, if an area is highly prone to uh, unpredicted, uh, you know, uh, where you cannot predict the tidal conditions or current or surf is very strong, the vessel might uh, refloat without your uh, approval or without when you don't want it to. So at that point of time, you better have both anchors walked back to prevent an accidental refloating. You can also order the chief officer to carry out a damage assessment. So that will include a full sounding of all the ship's tanks if possible. And if the ship's crew can uh, uh, get off the ship and survey the area around the beached area, that will be fantastic as well. 
Um, you can also order one of your officers to obtain the tidal data for the next few days, paying particular attention to the heights and times of the high and low waters. And that way you can plan the refloating of the vessel instead of it accidentally refloating it. All right. Also, of course, you have to communicate with your owners, charters, agents, um, and ensure that uh, you have repairs booked in uh, at a dry dock or a repair yard uh, where you can take your vessel at the soonest to get the repairs done. Uh, also goes without saying that you will cause an entry or rather you will make an entry in the official logbook, deck logbook and any other um, uh, related logbooks. Every event, every action with time, date and detailed uh, should be detailed in the logbooks. Also take lots of pictures, lots of photographic evidence. Um, um, and also I would stress a lot on uh, preventing oil pollution. These days in master's orals, they are looking for these words that uh, no matter what you do, you have in mind that uh, any action of yours will not cause any oil pollution. So that, that is something you must mention, all right? So make sure you order the crew to establish an oil boom. An oil boom is like a barrier equipment around the perimeter of the vessel to prevent any kind of oil pollution from spreading from the vessel in case there is a damage. Now, in the event that the barrier equipment is not available, then you can improvise. You can make one with mooring ropes. All right. You will also ascertain the depth of the water around the propeller. And uh, you will uh, make the ship heavier by adding additional ballast to reduce the possibility of any kind of accidental refloating. So that will make the ship heavier and sink the vessel further into the beached area. Uh, when appropriate, make sure that you have tugs ordered to stand by. Uh, if you can get those tugs for refloating, that will make your job easier rather relying completely on the ship's engines or the, uh, you know, the steering and the bow thruster to uh, refloat your vessel. So try to order the tugs. Uh, sometimes the tugs may have to come from a distance. It may take a couple of days. So make sure that you use that facility if it is available to you. Uh, also inform the marine accident investigation branch or any similar authorities. So marine accident investigation branch uh, is an Australian and UK based systems. Maybe if you are in another country, then you inform the authorities there to make sure wherever you have beached or your flag state as well goes without saying and uh, make use of an incident report form. All right. And, and especially when you are beached, then also you display the uh, ground signals while on the beach. All right. So I think it's two red lights in a vertical line. So you display that. Then also, like I told you before, make sure that you inspect the lower hull and the associated ground area at low water time by boat if necessary in order to complete the damage inspection. If you can walk around, that will be fantastic as well. Otherwise, take the boat, ask the chief officer to do it, take lots of photographs. Uh, the more evidence you have, the stronger your case will be tomorrow in lodging uh, any kind of reports or incident reports or claims for to the insurance companies. The next question is when carrying out an emergency steering gear test drill, what would you expect to observe and do? Now, as you know, carrying out an emergency test drill is required as per SOLA set intervals of at least three months. All right. So this is when you actually try out the emergency testing or emergency steering gear. Now, of course, with departure, when you are departing port, your officers, second officer, third officer, who's carrying out the departure checklist does try out the emergency switchover system with the ship's engineer. But that is not actually trying out the system at sea. What we are talking about here today is trying out the emergency steering gear test at sea and using it to maneuver the vessel. So that you have to do once every three months as a part of the SOLAS drill. Now the drill should demonstrate control of the ship's steering gear from the or rather the ship's steering from the steering flat compartment instead of from the navigation bridge. So as you all know that ship's steering is done from the navigation bridge. But during an emergency steering gear test, the ship's steering is taken over from the emergency steering flat or the steering flat. And uh, the bridge has no control over the steering. The bridge can only provide orders or give orders to somebody at the steering flat who will be steering the vessel. So the communications between the two stations, that is the bridge and the steering flat, should also be tested and seen to be adequate. Alternative power supplies, backup power supplies, emergency power supplies should also be operated, tested and found satisfactory. Once the drill has been completed, a statement shall be recorded in both the official and the deck log books and with detailed timing, a complete log of events and what was done during the testing 
should be logged as a report and filed for the ISM audit to take place. Now, during emergency steering gear test, the bridge, somebody on the bridge, of course, the master, um, he orders a few uh, different helm models and the somebody in the steering flat carries out those helm models to make sure that the ship is steering as per the bridge's requirements. You can involve as many people as you want in this testing. Uh, you don't only make them steer the ship, but also you teach them how to switch over the steering systems from the bridge to the steering flat. You can try out both the steering motors if required and uh, involve as many people as you want. But everything should be logged uh, so that the ISM auditors, when tomorrow they come to inspect your ship, they should know people who have been involved in the emergency steering and people who have the knowledge, people who know how to switch over the systems, how to steer the ship based on the bridges orders. All right, communications should also be tested and you must do it at an open sea, especially when there is no traffic around, when you cannot put your ship into danger. So these are some things you must always maintain a lookout. So that is basic safety. You must always mention the safety aspect of it as well. So when you're answering this question, talk about keeping the ship safe at all times, maintaining lookout, preventing pollution, making sure the ship is uh, away from any kind of close quarter situations. So you must try and do it at open sea. All right. Finally, the last question for today is while on passage in winter in high northern latitudes, your vessel starts to develop eye secretion on the upper deck of the vessels. All right, something that you see on your screen right now. Now, what action would you take? Now, before you answer this question, you must understand that eye secretion or the accumulation of ice on deck is a dangerous situation because it adds an additional weight on the superstructure on the decks. All right, when you add weights to it, your vessel's stability also gets impacted. All right, how does it get impacted is because the center of gravity starts to shift upwards towards the direction of the added weight, which reduces the overall GM of the vessel. So as the vessel's GM starts to reduce, your positive stability is affected. So if possible, as a master, you will alter course south towards warmer latitudes. All right, and if possible, reduce the ship's speed to avoid the wind chill factor, increasing the ice buildup. Also order the chief officer to employ the crew to clear the ice formation overboard with the use of axes, shovels, steam hoses. Uh, you also get these days de-icing salts, so you can use all that. You will also be monitoring the weather forecast and investigating the options of rerouting the vessel. So you of course have to take the shortest route. You cannot take the, a longer route and you know because you have limited fuel available on board, uh, you know, you have to plan the passage accordingly, but because to prevent the ice accretion, you can go up to southern latitudes or you can go a bit south, which will prevent a fast accretion of ice on deck. If sub freezing air temperatures are being experienced, then make a statutory report to this effect under a security priority communication. Now, clearing ice accretion is also a hazardous task because the crew might have slips and falls and you know break something and get injured so you have to be very aware of the safety aspect of it as well so before you start clearing out ice or carrying out any de-icing activities on deck make sure you carry out a risk assessment talk about the jhas and the work procedures the work to permit and uh, talk about you know preventing uh, injuries to the crew it's because the more importance or the more emphasis you keep on the safety of the crew safety of the ship and cargo uh, the more points you get with the oral examinations all right, so uh, this is the way, uh, these are the actions you will take. Sometimes it is possible to reroute your vessel, sometimes it's not. If it's not possible to reroute the vessel, then uh, like I said before, uh, slow down the speed or change the direction, course of the speed in vessel in such a way that the uh, cold air together with the sub-freezing temperatures do not contribute to the uh, ice accretion. Otherwise you have to keep a continuous de-icing operation going. So uh, guys, I hope this video was useful. I'll come up with part four very soon. And then I will also in detail provide you all the questions uh, that was recently asked of a master candidate so that it helps you to prepare for the oral examination. Thank you for watching guys and all the best with your studies. Bye for now.